first topic for the day is to learn about sequence iteration using for statements, a new type of statement. So let's say I have a tuple. We'll call it stairs. It starts at one, marches its way up, works its way down a little bit to four and then three, and then back up again. So stairs is a tuple. We know already that I can compute the length of stairs with a built-in len, and I can get individual elements. But in addition, let's say I want to know how many times a particular value appears in this sequence. Well, we can count it ourselves. So the number three shows up there, and it shows up again there. And we can have Python counted for us. So we count the number of times three appears, and the answer is two. How many times does hello appear? None. And the most common element, four, appears three times. So this is a built-in method on the sequence type of a tuple in Python. But while we can use built-in methods as much as we like, we'd like to understand how to implement them. So let's write our own. And first we'll write one using a while statement, because that's how we already know how to do it. So we take in a sequence s and some value that we'd like to count, and we're going to return the number of times value appears in s. So for instance, if I count while stairs for the number 4, I should find that it appears there three times. Now how will we do this? Well, we introduce some names. So the total number of times I've seen that value, and the index that we're currently considering then while the index is less than the length of the sequence, we can take a look at the item in the sequence for the index that we're considering and see if it equals the value. If so, we'll increase total by one. Whether it's in there or not, we'd like to increase index by one. And when we're done with that, we'll return total. Now we need to import the name getItem, which is built into the language. And then we should find that the doc test passes. And in fact, this counts the number of times the four appears in stairs. Well, it turns out we can do this more compactly with another type of statement. Instead of using a while statement, we'll use a for statement. The for statement is specifically created for sequential values. So we're going to have exactly the same behavior as we had before. Return the number of times value appears in s. We'll do it with the new function we're defining called count. We still do need to keep track of the total number of times we've seen that value. But for our control statement, we'll use something else, for. So we'll say for element in s if that element is value, total will increase. And when we're finished iterating through the entire sequence, we'll return total. So notice that this is simpler than what we had before. The effort of keeping track of what index we're on and incrementing that index isn't there anymore. Comparisons with the length aren't there anymore. And the work that we needed to get the item for a particular index is gone as well. Instead, we just name each element in the sequence. That's what a for statement does. And does it work? Yes, it works. Excellent. So there's the for statement. We use it very commonly in order to work with sequences in Python. A similar control structure exists in almost every language in wide use today. Now, it's actually quite flexible, the for statement. So in addition to binding a name to each value, we can also bind uh, multiple names if we have values of a particular type. Um, let's say I have a new problem, which is that I have a bunch of pairs in a row. Here are my pairs, uh, 1, 2, and 3, 3, and 5, 5, and 2, 1, and 5, 3. Now let's say that I'm interested in finding out how many of these pairs contain the same number repeated. 
such as 3, 3, or 5, 5. I can write a function to do that called count same, which takes in a sequence of pairs and returns the number of pairs that have the same value repeated twice. So for instance, if I count same on pairs, which I've defined above, then I should get the answer two because three, three and five, five pass this criterion. Now the way we implement this, again, we'll introduce a name total, but we'll use a slightly different form of the for statement. In this case, we'll bind two names, X and Y, to the two different parts of each element in pairs. So S, oh, excuse me, uh, pairs. So pairs is a sequence of pairs. Each element needs to have two elements of its own. So we need a nested structure like this, at which point this for statement will bind X to one and Y to two in the first iteration of the for statement. In the second iteration, it will bind X to three and Y to three. So in order to figure out how many of these are the same, we need only to check if X is the same as Y, then we'll increase total by one. And then we'll return the total and the test passes. So that's an introduction to the for statement. Let's take a look at its execution procedure. So what we're interested in here is sequence iteration. I showed you this implementation using a for statement. And what happens is for every element in the sequence S, the name that appears here will be bound to that value. And then the body of the for statement will be executed. Now the name here is going to be bound in the first frame of the current environment to each value in the sequence in turn. There are no new frames introduced when you execute a for statement. The for statement execution procedure in general is as follows. The actual statement looks like this. Step number one, we evaluate the header expression, which appears at the very end of the header line. And it must yield an iterable value. That means the value of this expression has to be something that we can think about as a sequence with each element in turn. Now, technically, this must be an iterable value and we will eventually define precisely what that means. But for now, just think about it as any sequence. For each element in that sequence, in order, we'll bind the name given in the for header to that element in the first frame of the current environment. No new frames are introduced. We then execute the suite of the for statement. So this is going to happen multiple times because we do it for each element in that sequence. Now what we saw in the last example was called sequence unpacking. So we had some pairs and it was important that we had a sequence, the elements of which were each sequences themselves, all of a fixed length. So a sequence of fixed length sequences allows us to write a for statement where we unpack each sequence in turn into individual names. So we gave a name for each element in a fixed length sequence. Here they're all pairs and each name is bound to a different value as in multiple assignments. 